oh, this is a book. This is what my mom read. This is what my grandma read. This is what Christians read. No, it is my lifeline. He is my lifeline. It's his words. And if I connect with him, if I connect with this, it's going to get me through all of my tough times, even when I feel numb. Hi, friends. This is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast. And let me warn you, I have no idea what you're in for today. <laughs> Neither do we. This is where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk about the real stuff of living it, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with my friends Aaron Cluley and Jay, three women who love having honest, loving women around us. And when we need a little extra help, we ask our friend, Miss Joyce, because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us. Come on in here and let's talk it out. And that's why I say... I, I. Let's just be super honest today. This this is we're always super <laughs> honest. Okay. Okay. I know, <laughs> but this is new. <laughs> <laughs> this topic is probably the most important topic yeah. that we'll talk about. It's it's how to study the Bible. We're going to mm-hmm. get really practical, but also with things that are going on in our lives yes. and. Um, there's just a lot happening. So it may not be the the fun episode that it always is, but it will be honest and it will be real. And now is when we need God's word more than any other time. Absolutely. Yeah. Th- this was kind of funny. Um, Jay was going to put the microphone way down l- low like this so that she could speak from her heart. Speak from my heart. <laughs> <laughs> because that's all you, that's what you want. Sometimes, Sometimes there's no words. There's, there's just no words. Speak from, from the heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But you were saying you feel kind of numb. Yeah. And sometimes we go through those times in our life that that really is the only way to explain it. Yeah. I, I just feel kind of numb. And so when you talk about studying the Bible, uh-huh. the first question is, I don't feel it. Uh-huh. You know, what am I going to get from it when when I'm feeling numb? Yeah. And and it's it's honesty. It's hard. And so we're going to talk through that and let people know why this is so important, how to push through in those hard times. But I think that's a great place to start is just like, this is not always super easy for everyone. No. And it's not your automatic go-to is to say like, I'm going to run in scripture when I feel numb because I feel numb. You know? right. like, yeah. And so just to catch everybody up, because that's what we do. That's what we do on Talk It Out. And you guys have been going through the whole divorce journey. And it, the saga continues, okay? <laughs> it's, it just continues. Hence the numbness. It dun, just, dun, dun. The, and, I'll just, and I feel like, I think I feel numb because I kind of feel like I have no control over the things that are happening. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. as someone that l- used to love to plan, I just, when, once you plan and plan and plan, and then it's like everything that's thrown out the window, it's just kind of like, well, what now? Yeah. You know, yeah. like what? What do you do now? So, like over the the um, well, last week, my ex is actually getting married. <laughs> Only been divorced two months officially, you know, but he's getting married. So that happened, and then I have to move mm-hmm. out of my place that I'm in now as I figure out in this holding pattern of what's next. Like yeah. I have several things I could do, but instead of moving forward, I feel like I believe in my heart that God is telling me to be still. Mm-hmm. And I don't like being so still. hard when he that says is that. The hardest. And so being still is it makes me feel numb. Yeah. And so even yeah. with moving, like Ginger offered to help me move, offered her truck, offered her husband to help me, <laughs> and I was just like <laughs> <laughs> numb. Okay, so just to give a little context to why I feel numb, that is why I have bags under my eyes. I used extra concealer today because I'm tired. You look beautiful. Sure. I was still moving at midnight, so. Aww. Yeah, you are beautiful. Oh, thank you. I I, I don't feel it, but I, I know I don't really feel much of anything right now. But yeah. we're gonna talk. But the, the word is definitely this is such a necessary thing because I think a lot of our friends probably have that same like same those same moments Absolutely. of like I, what do I how do I go to the word when I don't feel like it? Mm-hmm. How do I go to Jesus when I don't feel like talking? Right. How do I go to you know how do I allow God to move on my behalf? When I don't even feel like moving, I don't even know what that what that even right. means. So yeah. this is important, especially when too it, it's hard to even think like that's how can those words do anything with where I am now? Anyways, like it's just sometimes it feels like it's just a bunch of words, and how is that going to affect any change in my life? What's the point? Yeah. So I, I think this is a really important conversation to have. It is, and you know, everybody at different times in their life. Uh, if, if you've been a Christian for a long time, you've had those moments where mm-hmm. you're like. 
wow, I'm seeing so much in the Bible. I'm learning so much and growing. And then other times that I'm just hurting so much that I don't know if I can even turn this page and find anything yeah. that will make a difference for me. Our family right now and so many people that I know and love are going through really, really hard things. Mm-hmm. Um, just a heartbreak and, and illness and so much hard stuff. And so I know a lot of our friends who are part of this study here with us, I know a lot of you are suffering too. And so I I want us all to really talk about how this thing that makes no sense, mm-hmm. reading this book mm-hmm. can totally change my outlook and change my life. I've seen it happen. You've both seen yes, it happen. Absolutely. And Joy certainly has. So let's start there. We're going to, like I said, be very practical, dig into how this works. So let's start with what Joy says about studying God's Word and how valuable it is. I don't think that we can have a problem that you can't find the answer in here somewhere. Now, admittedly, you know, you need to get familiar with the Word of God, and some things are a little more challenging to find than others, but if it doesn't answer the specific question straight on, you'll find what I like to call the the spirit of the answer in here. Mm -hmm. In other words, I might not find the exact answer to my specific question, but I can find out about wisdom and discernment and how to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, and then God will lead me to that answer. One of the things that Jesus said is, my words are spirit and they are life. I want you just to think about that. God's word is not just like man's word. It's, it's a different kind of word. You can listen to people and they can talk a long time and say nothing. But when God talks, there's power in it. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. And the Bible teaches us that when we study the word of God, it's in 2 Corinthians 3.18, when we study the word of God, we are changed into his image from glory to glory to glory. So we change in little degrees and become more and more glorious all the time. Also in Romans 12, we're taught that God has got such an amazingly good plan for our life. But we will never really live in that plan unless we have our minds renewed. The Bible says that your mind has to be renewed and your attitude needs to be renewed according to the Word of God. So this book tells me how God thinks Hmm. and really even how God talks. And when we start out in our walk with God, we don't think like God. We certainly don't talk like God would talk, and words are very important. And we don't act like God acts. Mm -hmm. And so we come into a relationship with God through Christ, and then we have this new desire. We want to change. We want to be better. But our minds have to be renewed. And the more you study the Word, the more you learn truth, that truth is what sets you free, and you learn how to think differently. An example that I always like to use is from being abused by my dad in my childhood. I thought that I would always have a second-rate life. I had just settled into that thinking, well, you know, I'll always have a second-rate life because I had bad things happen to me that ruined my childhood. It mess me up. Who's going to want me? I, you know, I have to live in fear. Nobody can ever know. For people may think because they made a huge mistake in their life that now they can never have the good life that they could have had if they wouldn't have made that mistake. Mm-hmm. But when you read the, the Word of God, you begin to find out that in Christ, you're a new creature, that all things pass away, all things become new. So you'll change as you read the Bible. You'll learn to think differently as you read the Bible. You'll be encouraged as you read the Bible. God is the God of all comfort. You can be hurting. Maybe you've lost a loved one or you've had a great disappointment in your life. And you can go and just, just read one of the Psalms. Unto you, O Lord, do I cry. O my Lord, my rock, be not deaf and silent unto me. And I just pop that open. Mm-hmm. You know, so pretty much if you learn the different places to look for the different things that you need, if I need wisdom, I go to Proverbs. I need comfort. I go to Psalms. Tell me about some of those times that you guys learned that what you needed was in the Word of God. Like, how has this become real in your life? Mm -hmm. One of the the big things for me is right now, because of the numb place Mm -hmm. I'm I'm in, I go back to even the Word of God when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Like how in Proverbs it talks about training up a child and the way that they go when they're old, they won't depart from it. You know, so even when I don't have the strength to open up the Bible mm-hmm. in this moment, 
like the word is and then in, in Psalms how it talks about thy word have I hidden in my heart that yeah. I might not sin against God. And so like those scriptures, because I've had such a routine, even in the good times, that's mm-hmm. why it's good to read the word of God in the good times, you know, like yeah. as well as the bad times. Mm-hmm. But when you don't have the strength to like literally open up the book per se, right. if it's in your heart or if you have it written on post-it notes, it, like I've hidden it in my heart. So that's what right now that's helping me. That yeah. His word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin again. Him. <laughs> I love it's the like word a might storehouse, too. storehouse, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, we, we've got to fill ourselves up with it got to. all the time, especially when we're not in such a hard time. Yeah. So that when we are, we've got the fuel that we need yeah, to it, get through it. It bubbles up. Like, yeah. even like when I want to say like negative things or when I want, like what Joyce was just talking about, like when I want to give up, right. when I want to just be like, ugh, like those scriptures come to mind those scriptures and even like she said in Psalms that like David crying out it's like okay I'm not by myself Mm -hmm. when I feel bad and then like I love David because he's up that's why I love studying Psalms he's up like father I love you and then next one why have you forsaken you know it's just like it's the up and down of life and so um those scriptures come to mind you know so that's mine Jay sent me the cutest video I don't know if you sent it to Ginger a couple weeks ago of this little girl who was given the letters of the alphabet and oh, the, yeah. of the, yeah. the scriptures that went along with it. The one that you've talked about yes. on the podcast. I, like, I literally learned my, I learned my ABCs by like scripture. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So yeah, I, I saw a little girl on Instagram yeah. or, or like a viral video on TikTok or something where a little girl was literally going through her little kindergarten graduation yeah. and saying the same scriptures with so much power and so much like confidence. Yeah. And what stood out to me, I, I know that wasn't actually you in the video, but her tenacity of how she spoke each each scripture reminded me so much of you because watching you walk through this time and you are tired and numb, you still have that tenacity inside of you and those the scripture just pours out of you even when you don't feel like mm-hmm. reading the word or right. anything. Like it's so much a part of who you are. Yeah. So I yeah. smiled. I watched it a couple times. <laughs> That's right. That's right, girl. That's what I That's said. I, I can see Jay all over that yeah. too. <laughs> what about for you, Erin? What what Joyce said in in that teaching was that even if we don't find the specific answer for what we're looking for, the Bible still addresses mm-hmm. basically everything that we need. Have, how yeah, have you found sure. that to be true? Even recently, sometimes I would I would really appreciate it if there was like a glossary of every single <laughs> oh, possible yeah, situation in my yeah. whole life. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so there's not, but the index is helpful. Um, but even last year, so there was so much happening in our world in 2020 and I just, I needed God to give me some clarity. And I, I felt like I had a year where I was questioning everything I'd ever been taught. Usually yeah. you do that like earlier, but I don't know, maybe I'm slow. Um, no, but just kind too. of, you too, mm-hmm. kind of thinking through everything I've ever learned and I've ever been taught and everything I've ever thought about God and show, show me truth about who you are. So I went to the gospels and I read, I read Luke and I think I might've done Matthew I don't know if I did all four of them, but the gospel is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And so reading Jesus's words and how he responded to people around him who were different from him and those who were like him and how he treated people was exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get my answers for every single question on my list, Mm -hmm. but what I saw was how he interacted with people. How to live. Yeah. He loved people who were like him and people who were different from him the same. And he didn't judge. And he was... He sought justice and mercy, and everything he did was with the base of love. And so, I was I sat back a few times and just thought, I don't have my answers specifically, but I know how to approach the situation mm-hmm. in a way I didn't know before I started reading. Yeah. So isn't, isn't that's that good. funny though? Like in the scripture, like I think a lot of times what I used to want were the specifics. Yeah. I wanted to exact, and I'll grant like, you, take this job, <laughs> not this job. Yeah, like give me the answer. Yes. Yeah. Is it yes nope. or no? Mm-hmm. But but Jesus never even answered in yes or no. He answered in parables. Yeah. Like if you read the scripture, you read yeah. the gospels, you'll uh-huh. see that he he answered in parables because he wants us to stretch our thinking because everyone's situation isn't the same. No, like even like with yes. figuring out what's my next move. Yeah. Just tell me. No, mm-hmm. he wants me to trust him. Mm-hmm. He wants me to trust that he's got a great plan for me. You've all I've always said Jeremiah twenty nine eleven for I know the plans I have for you said the Lord like I know he has a plan for me but when it comes time to actually apply that and yeah. apply n- n- the knowing mm-hmm. it's it's challenging it's mm-hmm. difficult but what what one thing that I noticed too is a lot of people ask things like well why do 
bad things happen to good people, mm-hmm. you know? And and then if you actually study the word, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, it talks about sin and how, how filthy it is, but mm-hmm. it also- And how the rain pours and, and how, on the just it, and the unjust. Exactly. Yeah. Like it, it rains on both. And so, but if you read like Jesus, he went through Ugh. the worst. Yeah. yeah. So- and he didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. He had people lie on him. He had people betray him. So in this situation that I'm going through, it's like, I've really been looking at Jesus because I'm like, he went through betrayal. Yeah. Granted, it wasn't divorce. It wasn't an affair, but it was sure. just the people he loved the, the mm-hmm. most that betrayed him and yeah. then ultimately watched him die, mm-hmm. you know? And so, and but the thing about it is how to go through those suffering moments when Jesus was on the cross, he went with, that's what I've been studying right now mostly. It's like in Matthew, like he went with God, like he yeah. talked with God. So mm-hmm. it, do, it doesn't give you the specifics on how to handle your situation per se, but it gives you the general guide. What, um, I, get yeah. from, what I get from studying the Bible. And Joyce talks about this a lot, and I think it's really important, the difference between just reading Mm -hmm. and studying the Word. I mean, reading is good. Start somewhere, Mm -hmm. but meditate on it throughout the Mm -hmm. day. You know, dig into it. Think about what it means in your life. Mm -hmm. Look at other scriptures and how they connect to each other. And this is really important. Don't just pull out one scripture to try to find the answer that you want without context for the story and what's happening. Because I can find something to say whatever I want it to say, Mm -hmm. but it may not be accurate. But what I find when I really dig into the Bible is the building blocks for my life. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not about understanding everything. Mm-hmm. I can't possibly say I understand everything that the Bible says. But this this book is alive. Yeah. And every time I can read the same thing two years later and get something yeah. very different from it, because yeah. that's what the Holy Spirit does in our life. He shows us what these words mean in a way that applies to our situation and to our need right now. So those those building blocks, that's the foundation that I have to base my life on, my every decision, how I handle my emotions, how yeah. I handle disappointment, all those things. And I don't always do it well by any means, but mm-hmm. but it's something I can hold on to. It's something that I need. And without that, I don't know what I would do. I think something that I learned kind of what you were saying too, Jay, in the past year is just how like the Bible is alive and active. And it and we aren't getting this specific exact answer for how to handle a situation. But how cool is that when I read something a couple years ago and I God showed me something in that verse because that's what I needed in that moment. Mm-hmm. Two years later, I've come back to it in a totally different season of my life, needing something completely different. And he used that same scripture to speak to me in a different way. Yeah. Only like God's sovereignty could he writes something that is going to apply to all of us in a different way when we need it. Mm-hmm. So he can't yeah. give you a formula for your life because our situations are constantly changing, yeah. evolving. But right. in all his wisdom, he knows exactly how much to give us and in the in the context of how to give yeah. it to us that we can apply it. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't make us little robots. No. I love that. Yeah. Like he gives us freedom of choice, mm-hmm. which... I've asked him to take so many times. Right. You know, just God, choose just take it for me. You want. Yeah, I don't just, choose. I'll, I'll do what you want me to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll just take it. But he doesn't. He doesn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, he yeah. always gives us respect, mm-hmm. and that's how much he loves us. So yeah. I think that's really important in all of this too. Because yes, we do want the obvious. We do want things to be very, very clear. Mm-hmm. But God says, "I want to help you think differently. I want to help you learn." What were you going to say? Um, I don't. I don't exactly remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so polite. No, I do remember. No, no, no. I do remember now. Um, it was when you talked. To, I think it's important for as we're talking through this, like just jot down notes. And I know a lot of people don't understand, even when we have our casual conversations. You know, like, well, talk more about the word. I'm like, but if you listen to what we're saying. Like we're digging into the scripture. We're digging into the word every time we talk. Um, and when Joyce, you know, her clips mm-hmm. are when she's here, it, it, just take those notes and go back and read for yourself. Because something you said, it was two things you just said about um, there's a difference between just reading a scripture versus actually studying the word. Sit with it and meditate with it. Yeah. Because the word of God is alive in that book. But God, who is love and is the word right now, 
is alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. when you read that scripture and what I've done a whole lot more than what I used to, cause I used to just plow through and I had all my markers, all my <laughs> highlighters and you know, all of my doodles. Like that was what, and that made me feel like a Christian uh-huh. because I had all my highlights and my doodles, you know, and like if my Bible with the duct tape, you don't doodles. use yellow and pink. No, then you're, you're not, not a, a real Christian. Christian. <laughs> like every like alternating. And then I have highlight words. Ooh, green, you know, like, that's what made me feel like a Christian. But now it's like, no, I'll read what I need to read and then I'll sit still mm-hmm. and let the word God meditate. Like I meditate on his word. I sit in quiet and say, like, God, what did that mean? Yeah. Like, what are you trying to show me now? Because mm-hmm. God is alive right now. Yeah. Like God, his, the book is alive. The words in there are real and true, but God, he's here. He's here now. He's wherever you are right now. And he wants to visit you no matter yeah. what you're reading, yeah. you know? And when you, when you do open the Bible, ask God to mm-hmm. show you something. Because I'll tell you, I've, I've been studying the Bible as long as I can remember, and there have been a whole lot of times that I didn't bother to ask God anything. Right. I'm, I'm supposed to read now, so <laughs> yeah. I'd open up Check. the Bible and I'd read, and then I'd go my way. And that does not do a whole lot. Yeah. So we, we really need to ask God to fill us with the Spirit, to show us what He wants us to see, to give us divine understanding. Mm-hmm. And, and he promises that he will do that. So let's figure out a little bit more about the how-to of all of this. Joyce is going to talk a little bit more about some specific suggestions that I think you'll love. Psalm 56, be merciful and gracious to me, O oh God. Well, it's life-changing to study what mercy is. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And so I could spend my whole day, I could start there, and I could spend my whole day studying mercy. So how would I go about that? Well, the first thing I would probably do if I knew nothing at all about mercy, I've got, a, I've got a, an American dictionary of the English language from Noah Webster, 1828. And, and this you, is one that you really this, like. Yeah, this is the original. I mean, Noah Webster had to learn, I don't know how many languages hmm. to do the dictionary. I mean, it was like a mammoth project and he was a tremendous man of God. So if I knew nothing about mercy at all, I would look it up in here see what it meant. And then I would probably get my, my go. vines dictionary of Hebrew and Greek words. And I might look it up, see what it meant in the Old Testament. Then I might look it up, see what it meant in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. And then I would get this Strong's Concordance and I would look up the word mercy. Well, let's say there's, I don't know, a hundred references on mercy. Well, I might start scanning down there and see which one kind of Oh, I want to know more about that. Uh-huh. If there are only 20, I might look them all up. If I really wanted to do like a month-long study on mercy, I might get around to looking them all up. And, and then you, you look those scriptures up yourself. And if you're not accustomed to finding things in the Bible, that in itself is a good exercise. I don't know. It's just like, I mean, I love my Bible. You know, you just, I hug it sometimes. It's like, you, it gets to be you're just your friend. And the yeah. more familiar you are with it, I mean, I wear one out about every two years. I really like that suggestion Mm -hmm. of finding something that you really need. Mm -hmm. I I need this. So I I had that this week or last week. I don't know when it was. But (laughs) I just, I had a lot of things happening. I had a lot of opportunity for offense. Mm -hmm. Things did not go on a broad scale the way that I thought that they should from several different people. And so it wasn't even like I was angry at any one person, but I knew me. And I know that if I don't pull out those roots of offense Mm -hmm. before they get deep down in there, that I would have a problem. And so I started studying. I started looking up offense and bitterness and forgiveness and love so that I could respond in the right way to what seemed like just a barrage. So that's how I know when when Satan's involved in Mm -hmm. something, when it doesn't even just come from one place, it's coming at you from every yeah. direction. Yes. It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. That's one of the times that you really know, okay, this is not about that person. Yeah, This is an entirely different kind of attack. So as I studied those things, it was like I could just feel those weeds coming mm-hmm. out. Um, and I had to do the work. I, right. I had to keep doing it. So. Sure. 
you read and you learn what you need to do. And there is power in God's word that brings that love that you didn't feel, Mm -hmm. that you didn't have, brings that forgiveness. And then you make the choice. Are you going to do what God's word says or no? Yeah. Yeah. So as you're studying, we always have choices to make. But that was just a great example for me that I needed it and it really made a difference. Good for you for being on the offense. Like, yeah. like, what were the steps you took to get to the point where you're like, oh, I, I need to, like, what flagged it for I you? I was mad. Okay. <laughs> I was no, mad. I know I was mad at a lot of people. Oh. Like, were we on the list? I'm pretty, sure sure later. I'm pretty sure I was because Ginger offered, like I said earlier, she you offered, not on the and list. I, was, I didn't even, resp- I don't even think I responded. Oh, she was mad then. She was. Yeah. No. Tell the truth, shame though. No. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it was. And my friends who are watching, I love you, so we're all good. But no, my my birthday is on a holiday. Okay, mm. so. Mm-hmm. Um, That makes it easy for people to remember, but hard for people to respond to because everybody's super busy. Mm -hmm. So all my life, you know, I've always been okay with that and it's not been a problem. But this year in particular, Mm -hmm. I had one of those birthdays that I didn't hear from hardly anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, and and (laughs) that sounds so lame. I get it though. Sometimes it it, it You know, sometimes it just kind of hurts and you're Mm like, and, and I'm talking like, my mom and dad. <laughs> oh, like the ones who bore you. Are just, those are, you said friends. <laughs> You're talking about the woman that birthed you. And that's what I'm saying. It's not about them. I know how much they love me, all that. It, but, but that's just an example. It was a lot of people. Sure. It, it was people that I know love me that I always hear from. And it was just crickets. <laughs> And I'm I'm thinking, you know, what is going on? And that that's just a little part of sure. it. You know, there were a lot of different things happening. That's why I'm saying when it comes from every area. But that's just one little example, and that's so minor. But I could decide mm-hmm. nobody loves me. You know, everyone's forgotten me, and I'm so pathetic. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to get there. I know you know this, but I just want to, like, it's okay to be hurt by the fact that you feel forgotten. Like, and oh, that's yeah. like, but I love the fact, like like Aaron was saying, like that you took you took the measures, you humbled yourself enough to be mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm feeling some type of way, and I'm gonna let it be, but I'm not gonna let it fester because yeah. I don't want it to stay here. Right. I think that's important to know. It's like, yeah, when you have those moments that are truly valid and truly like mm-hmm. okay that your feelings are hurt, that you but you say like, okay, I don't want to like let this. Day. Right, I don't want right. to let this linger. And you went straight to like looking it up. I, d- I just went to Google and I said, what does the Bible say about offense? Hmm. And it pulled up all these scriptures, lists of scriptures and studies and all sorts of different things. Yeah. So it's, it's just very practical and it really helps. I've had to do that a few times in my life. Like if I've been reading... A, like if I'm reading Romans or something, but then something happens in my life and I need to pick a topic to start studying because of something like what you're explaining. Mm -hmm. Um, It's hard for the planner and me to like switch gears, but I, I have learned that when something comes up, sometimes it's okay to stray from your reading plan Mm -hmm. or whatever you're supposed to be doing and take some time to dig into the word and study the topic that you need to. Like if today I'm really struggling with patience, it's okay if I let Romans go for a day. Yeah. Let God show me what he wants to in his word. I need to be flexible in how I study. So you can do things like what you just said. Yeah. And learning to recognize like those words in you, like like offense is something I'm struggling with or patience or whatever. Yeah. That I, I really appreciate what you said about be flexible. Find yeah. what you need mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. and find what works best for you all the time. Because for instance, Joyce and I have had this conversation a lot. She spends a lot of time in the morning studying the word. Well, I'm not a morning person and I've tried to give that time in the morning before and it was not my best time. Yeah. And I feel like we need to give God our best. Mm-hmm. So for me at night is when I really study. Now this this other time was just like all the time, you know, is digging into it whenever you need it. But my regular time with God that we all need to Mm -hmm. dedicate is at different times for different people. I I wish mine was in the morning. I really think that's best. Yeah. But for me, that's not what works best. So finding what works for you. Whether it's in the morning, in the afternoon, whatever it is, but just schedule it. Just and put it, put an alert in your phone 
Make it a priority. Make it a priority because like I said, like I can spend that time with God intentionally. I think the intentionality of it strengthens the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's a verse that I think says so much about studying the Bible. It's Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. My son, pay attention to what I say. Tune your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Mm-hmm. And it's just so strong because God's saying, listen to what I say. Mm-hmm. Well, what he's saying quite often is through the Bible. Yeah. It's through yeah. the word of God. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them in front of you all the time. You know, the the Jewish culture is so literal that they would, you know, tack them on their doorways and and have them sewn into their clothing. I, I love that. Yeah. It's just part of them all the time. And, and, you know, we can do that on a more physical and a more literal way, you know, yeah. so that it's in our heart that we don't forget it. We can put it on a sticker on our mirrors. We can put it in front of us however we need to, but that helps us to study the Word and for it to come to life. And to remember that when we don't feel life, when we need healing in our spirit, in our soul, and in our body, that God's Word is that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't only tell us how to find that, but it brings that into us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I love that. That's one of the best examples. So let's jump back into what Joyce has to say now and give us some more practical tips on what topics to study. Let's just say that you, uh, you need to know what the Word says about healing. Well, studying what, what the Bible says about finances is not going to help you with healing. So just like if you had a headache, you might take an aspirin, you wouldn't put a Band-Aid on your head. We can, the Word of God is medicine for our flesh, one translation says. I love that. So if I'm mad at somebody and I'm having a really hard time getting over it, then I need to go to my concordance and I need to look up the word anger and forgive. Mm -hmm. And then I need to start what I call running references. I need to start looking those scriptures up. Right. Or if you want to do on the computer, which I do a lot of times now when I'm studying, I'll put in the word forgive in my Bible study package and just that fast, pulls up every scripture that's in there on (laughs) forgiving. And you read those, and I'm telling you the absolute truth. The Word of God has the power to save your soul, James 1 says. If you approach the Word with meekness, which means an attitude of humility, this is God's Word. It's powerful, and it is going to help me. It's going to change me. I don't want to be mad. I want to forgive you know, whatever the case may be. Read those scriptures. Read them out loud. Sometimes I'll even write scriptures down in longhand because it just helps get it in you. Anything that yeah. helps renew your mind, you get it in you. Another thing that the Bible itself teaches us to do is to meditate on the Word of God. And the word meditate just simply means to roll something over and over in your mind or to mutter it under your breath. So like for me, when I was seeking a real revelation on how much God loved me, which was like now some 34 years ago. Mm -hmm. First of all, I studied it for almost a year. I read everything I get my hands on on love. I knew pretty much every scripture in the Bible on love because I'd read them over and over and over and over and over and over and over. But another thing that I would do is I would drive down the road saying, God loves me. And I might say that 50 times a day. Yeah. Or I would go look at myself in the mirror and say, God loves me. I, it needed to become a revelation to me. And, and information can become revelation through meditating on the Word of God or through going through something over and over and over again until it's no longer just in your head, but it yeah. drops down into your heart. So when you talk about that, the Word of God dropping down into your heart, mm-hmm. I, I think that is... A really important point for all of us to get, and it's what you were saying when when you feel numb, mm-hmm. when you feel so hurt that sometimes you almost feel like you just don't even have the strength to open the Bible. Yeah, but it's dropped into your heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't leave you. Yeah, and then it it comes up when you need it, and before you know it, you can open that book again. Yeah, it reminds me of, I remember in high school, I used to study Spanish. Like, I used to speak Spanish, 
I was pretty fluent and I translated like with my Spanish teacher, we would go and we'd do Bible studies with people and I would trans, I would, I would help translate. That's cool. Um, and, but everything about my, my Spanish speaking experience was about translation. Mm-hmm. But then after I went to college, I kind of, I, I took a couple of Spanish courses, but then I just, it just fizzled away. And I kind of forgot, I pretty much, I know some of the language, but not as much as I did when I was really in it. Right. Mm-hmm. But then my brother who's like three years younger than me, he studied Spanish as well. and He became fluent. But then after high school, he then went to these different Spanish speaking countries and inundated himself in the culture and then and, and kept it going. And so now, even now in his thirties, he's, he's still fluently speaking. I asked yeah. him, what's the difference? Like, how did I forget? And how did, how did you remember? He said, because I put myself in it. I stayed in mm. it. He's like, you That's still, good. he said, you still, you you were still translating in your brain. He's like rojo means red to you. He said rojo means rojo to me. Like oh, wow. it doesn't mean it doesn't. So hola means hello to me. Uh huh. Hola means hola to him. He said I stayed in it yeah. until it clicked. So when you say yeah. that, that's what I think of when you read the scripture and you're reading it for routine sake, and you're reading it to translate it, and you're reading it to to say that you did it, or are you reading mm-hmm. it just because you think that's the right Christian thing to do? It's there. Yeah. And it's good and it's good for a season, but it's not until you put yourself in the culture and into the word of God and into the relationship, into the meditating that it actually sinks and goes into the heart where it translates, where the word of God simply just means what it is in here. It's yeah. not a trans. It's not like a, that's a great way to describe that's it. How, that's, so how, that's how I feel about it. It's yeah. like it, rojo means rojo. It doesn't mean red. Yeah. Like the word of God doesn't just mean, oh, this is a book. This is what my mom read. It's my grandma read. It's what Christians read. no. It is my lifeline. Mm -hmm. He is my Mm -hmm. lifeline. It's his words. And if I connect with him, if I connect with this, it's going to get me through all of my tough times, even when I feel numb. And so that's what I'm standing on. I'm literally standing on that. Yeah. This is not a set of rules. We don't read the Bible because it's something that God wants us to do and not do. This is only because he loves us so much and he wants to give us the tools to get everything he has for us. Right. But it's not a bunch of rules. It's like so full of love and grace and mercy and and justice and right and wrong, but yeah, and so hard good. stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, when you really read through the Bible, there's a lot of hard stuff. I mean, it, yeah. yeah, it's like that's when, why it's hard for me to read it right now. Yeah. It's like, this is hard. This everything's hard. Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, it's like a friend <laughs> who loves you enough to say the really, really hard yes. stuff. Yeah, and. The, when you just feel kind of smacked sometimes by the love of God, sometimes I'm grateful, and other times I'm like, "Ouch!" You know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't really want that right now. I'm hurting in this way, but it's like, it's like when you need a few stitches for your wound to heal. Those stitches hurt at first. Yeah. But they facilitate the healing. Mm -hmm. And God's word is all about facilitating the healing. And so there's so much Mm -hmm. about that that Mm -hmm. I've really learned over the years. One thing that I, I love doing on top of studying what we need to study is every few years, I love reading the Bible through. You know, like they have those Bible in a, in a year programs. And let's be honest, I never make it in a year. Okay. I, it, so it takes me a little bit longer I was than like, a year. You do that often? Like, uh, good job. Every, every few years I start that and, and I get through it. But like I said, it, it doesn't it, take you. It's a little longer. Yeah. But the reason I do that is because I, I hear so much in God's word. In places that I don't expect it. Like you were saying, there's so much in there that teaches us things that we don't know we need to know until we learn it. You would have never thought that the begats and all of the people that came through the lineage of Jesus Mm -hmm. would help me with my forgiveness journey. Like, what does that have to do with forgiveness? No, it's the realization that no matter who's wronged you, no Mm -hmm. matter what people have done... Mm -hmm. Like they are still a part of the big picture story, story. with Rahab. Like she's yeah. a harlot. How is she in the lineage of Jesus? But God can use anyone. And it's not up to me mm-hmm. to choose. Oh, you've done this to me or you've done this to this person or you've done this in business or you've done this in church or you've done and to try to disqualify. God yeah. will use anyone to bring something beautiful out of it. And that helped me in my forgiveness journey of being like, hey, whoever yeah. did whatever to you. That's on their journey, mm-hmm. and you have to forgive them 
because it's very possible that their names could be in some type of written situation. You know, like sure, who yeah. knows? And I have to seriously let go and forgive. So, And God yeah. can use that maybe terrible thing that they did for good in your life. Yeah. It just doesn't make, it yeah. doesn't seem to make sense. But when you think of even like the three Hebrew boys going through, a, why would you go? Who I'm pretty sure when they were about to go through the fiery furnace, they never... Imagine like we're about to make history, guys, and they're going to talk about us. For, <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> they're going to talk about us for thousands and thousands of years. But like, you just never know how history is going to play out. And those stories in the Bible really help you understand in your good times, in your bad mm-hmm. times, God is going to work it out for your good. He's going to turn it around. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of hard stuff too. With I mean, there's a lot of stuff I don't get mm-hmm. that I'm like, God, what were you doing there? You yeah. know what? Why did this happen? Why? You know, why did all these people have to die? Mm-hmm. Why is it so difficult and violent and bloody and and just a lot of questions? But what I love about studying the Word is God is big enough for all those questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, He says His ways are not our ways. I'm not going to understand all of it, mm-hmm. but. He will guide me and teach me. Yeah. You did the 30-30 challenge. A lot of people did. Um, I did. <laughs> so that was that was the challenge at Joyce Meyer Ministries, to read the Bible 30 minutes a day for 30 days in a row and see what it did. Mm-hmm. What did it do for you? They changed my whole life because not until that point had I figured out, like, I would read my Bible for a week or two, and then, I don't know, I'd move on. And then I'd come back to it, and we just had this relationship where it was like touch and go. So committing 30 days, I saw God move in ways I had never experienced. And it's not that like my circumstances miraculously changed. We were trying to get pregnant. It was taking a long time and I was really upset and I wasn't pregnant at the end of the 30 days, Mm -hmm. but I saw God show me his promises in his word. He didn't show me, I promise you will have a baby on October 7th. Mm -hmm. That's my birthday. Um, (laughs) But what he did show me is I am faithful. And regardless of your circumstance, I I am still victorious and mm. keep your trust in me. So learning to to study his word like Joyce teaches. Yeah. It chokes me up a little bit. Um, to study his word and not just read it, to to dig in. And I would write the verses out like she said, and then I would summarize them and then I would put my name in them. And it just became my own. Like that verses for me. Um, totally transformed by yeah, my Bible reading. Yeah, like I I have this list that I just keep on my phone all the time of um my my verses that I wouldn't even call my favorite verses. They're just things that have really jumped out at me at the mm-hmm. time when yeah. I've been reading. And so I pick up my phone and I put it in there because I know I don't want to forget it and I'll need it later. So that list is so long now. I can scroll and scroll and scroll. But I find so many wonderful things that that mean something different and surprise me mm-hmm. and teach me new things. And this is another thing that Joyce talks about. And um my my dad, when I went to college, gave me a, a journal. He gave me a blank notebook. And he said, okay, you know, you're starting off on your own. The most important thing for you to do is to continue spending time in the Word and start writing down hmm. what God's doing in your life and what He's teaching you. You'll always be glad you did that. And that, that was pretty much it. And I started journaling then. And it it really has meant so much to me. And it, it just cemented. Mm-hmm. There's something about writing things down yeah. or even typing them online mm-hmm. you know, into some sort of a journal that makes it a permanent part of your life. Yeah. I wish <laughs> in the season of numb, it's been so <laughs> difficult to write. Has it? It's been difficult to write. And that's, I love to, That's the hardest. It's the hardest yeah. because honestly, and I, I feel like... There are phases to it because as I write it, sometimes mm-hmm. it's painful to see it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay, I already know what I'm going through. I don't want to talk about it, you yeah. know? And so I haven't been journaling as much. I used to love it, you mm-hmm. know? And, and I think it's so helpful. And I think I would love to get back to that. But allowing yourself but there the are grace. Seasons. Yeah, allowing yourself to have the grace to like not go, have the seasons of not writing and, and writing. But yeah. I, I see it's so helpful. And if you don't, if you don't have the energy to write, then find your group of friends where you can at least talk. Mm-hmm. And that's where yeah. this has helped a bunch because I haven't like when I get to write, I'm like, Ugh, you know. But sure. do something to get it out yeah. and and to talk about it and to to express yourself because that's yeah. one of the biggest things. Like I love journaling, but when you're numb, it's hard to it's like, Ugh, yeah, you know. And I think this is really important too. As as we close for all of our friends who are listening, is 
This is about a relationship. It's not about guilt. So if you've never done this before and you start today, good for you. You know, God is up there saying, I'm here, come on in. He's not saying, no, you haven't done it right. You haven't done it often enough. I'm disappointed. He's he's wooing you. He's pursuing you um, like someone who loves you so much, not as someone in anger and and in in guilt or shame. So I want you to know that today. This is a place where you can start. If you've been doing it for years, good for you. If you haven't, it is not too late. So we have something that will be very helpful for you. It's our How to Study the Bible download. It's a booklet that digs into a lot of these things that Joyce was talking about. How to Study the the Word. It's very practical. You can go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out and get that absolutely free download. You can also subscribe to our friends list. We encourage you to do that because um, that does put you in a place where you're reminded about Bible study, where you're reminded about the Word of God, and you'll know when new podcasts are coming up, get some fun behind the scenes stuff, but this will help you in that journey in the Word as well. And we also um, invite you to something very exciting, very important. Our WC21 is coming up. <laughs> Woo-hoo! Woo! We, we We love our women's conference. (laughs) Love Life Women's Conference is so much fun. This one is going to be a little bit different, and I'm excited about it because Joyce is talking about how to be authentically, uniquely you. And this women's conference, of course, coming out of this time of pandemic, is going to be a very unique one, too. So we invite everyone to join us. We're going to be having a lot of great music, special guests, and it's all on your own time. It's all online. You can take it in at your own pace. It is as unique as you are. So we just want to draw you into God's word and help you to see how much he loves you and how unique you are. So join us October 8th and 9th for this fun virtual event. It'll be available after that online. Thank you guys. No, this is Love great. You both. Thank you. Thank Love you. you. Thanks to everyone for being with us. Dig into God's word and we'll see you next time. Bye, Bye friends. Go get today's free resource at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And while you're at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, you can also review previous episodes, get to know us a little better, and sign up for our friends list to receive exclusive content. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast.